it is 10 minutes after noon. It's raining here. However, the thermometer reads below 32. So I'm a little confused. And I think that perhaps the National Weather Service, once again, does not understand how weather works in Michigan. All right, end of rant. We're going to bring you a couple of stories. Uh, we're kind of playing catch up today. The couple of breaking stories that happened right before the State of the Union having to do with New York's abortion law and then the comments from the West Virginia governor who apparently was a practicing physician at one time. And we're going to let this commentary uh, from Fox News, the opinion piece, stand for both uh, stories. We're not going to actually go to the Fairfax story. So, uh, sorry, not Fairfax. That's a different story. The uh, West Virginia governor's comments. So, um, today, uh, Tom Basile for Fox News produced this opinion piece and included this clip uh, featuring Cardinal Dolan. Another New York national precedent will be established, the most aggressive women's equality platform in the nation is going to be in law in this state. And that's the way it should be. New York passing a sweeping abortion law, allowing many abortions up until the day of the baby's birth. The move sparking outcry all across the country with many Americans asking, how is this okay? All right, here to weigh in is, is, is New York City's Archbishop, Cardinal Timothy Dolan. Cardinal Dolan, we thought of you right away because there's a Catholic governor cheering the fact that uh, abortion would be legal in this state up until almost birth. Yeah, thanks for having me Go on. Ahead. Please never use the word weigh in when I come on. <laughs> I asked you to avoid that term. Right. <laughs> Listen, no, thanks, Brian, for bringing it up. Ghoulish, grisly, gruesome, these are the words that people, independent observers, are using about this so-called Reproductive Health Act. The fact that he's a Catholic, as far as I'm concerned, has nothing to do with it. Any thinking human being that would want a baby, uh, allow a baby to be aborted right up to the moment of birth, any thinking, thoughtful, considered human being that would think that a baby could be, uh, the abortion uh, uh, procedure could go forward without proper medical uh, care, as now doctors don't have to uh, uh, be there. Anybody that thinks that a baby who survives the gruesome abortion procedure and that a doctor is no longer required to attempt to save that baby's life, you don't have to be a Catholic to abhor those kind of things. I like what, right. remember uh, Governor Casey in, uh, in yeah. Pennsylvania? He's been gone about 20 years. So here's a liberal Democrat who said, a Catholic, by the way, who said, I didn't learn abor abortion was wrong in the catechism. I learned abortion was wrong in my biology books, in my study of law, particularly the Declaration of Independence and the 14th Amendment, and in ordinary uh, common sense and human reason. This is just awful, and I don't know why we would brag about this. What, what bothers me, it used to be that our opponents, when it would come to pro-life, would say, look, we want to keep abortion safe, legal, and rare. They no longer find it a regrettable uh, 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 procedure. Right. They want it safe, legal, and rare. Are you kidding? Now it's going to become dangerous. A doctor's not even... Uh, has to do it. It's going to become enforced because people with uh, with conscientious objection to the hideous procedure, right. healthcare workers, and there are many, are now going to have to do it, and it's going to become frequent. So safe, legal, and rare, forget it. And it's now dangerous. It's now enforced, and it's now frequent. This is not good for our country. How can we brag about that? You pop champagne carts for that, and drink and drink Chablis and and eat brie. Well, look you at light the, up the Empire at, State Building. Right. Look at those images that we just put up, Cardinal. Just somebody cheering about it? Just, I don't get it. Just the fact that the baby can be born alive and they, it, then they can terminate it. There are calls from people in, in the Catholic Church for uh, Governor Cuomo to be excommunicated. Mm -hmm. 
from the Catholic You're Church. You're telling me I get wheelbarrows of letters every day. I think that would be counterproductive myself. Uh, for one... Well, he's not following ca Catholic doctrine. Well, I don't know if... Uh, this, But there's my point, Steve. We would be giving a, uh, ammo to our enemies who say, this is an internal Catholic disciplinary uh, matter. Uh, this is really not civil rights. This is really not biology. These Catholics don't have freedom when it comes to this. I, don't, I think we'd be given our enemies But the Catholic Church, ammo. Cardinal, stands against abortion. And here is the most prominent Catholic in the state of New York, and he's saying, oh, you know, this is and, a good thing. And the Catholic, the, the canon laws, which you, uh, thank you, uh, quoted, would also say that you have to use it for medicinal purpose, and you think that there's going to be a good effect that can come out of this. We have a governor that brags about it. We have a governor that uses his dissent from church teaching as applause lines. In fact, we have a governor that takes quotes from Pope Francis out of context to draw an artificial cleavage between the bishops of New York and, and the Holy Father himself. He's not going to be moved by this. So what would be the use? Here's and we're going to leave it that uh, interview there. Links in the show notes if you would like to read the article and listen to the rest of the clip. We thank Fox News for bringing us Cardinal Dolan's comments. Cardinal Dolan has always been one of my favorite uh, commentators when the Catholic Church in the United States is called to not weigh in because Cardinal Dolan doesn't like that. But when uh, the Catholic Church is called to render an opinion, based on their theology and what they teach their congregations, according to canon law. Let's keep going. Now, you're going to wonder why I am presenting this next article. Let me tell you, if you follow the logic and the thinking in this uh, piece, you will understand how we got from, um, you know, taking the life of a baby in utero to save a mother's life, which is contrary to canon law. <laughs> you'll get, you'll understand how we got from that all the way to let the baby be born, let the mother decide, and then kill the baby. This is infanticide, make no mistake. Now, what am I talking about? This article from Sputnik is titled, Indian sues parents for conceiving him without explicit consent. And this was published um, today. After the video went viral, social media users broke loose on the Indian anti-natalist with many of the netizens castigating him for his actions. New Delhi, uh, via Sputnik, Ra Raphael Samuel from Mumbai, India, did, not, did the unthinkable and sued his parents for bringing him into the world, quote, without his explicit consent, close quote. He then went, uh, went out and made a clarification video and posted it on his YouTube channel and Facebook page, the media outlet, lately or lastly reported the video in which he can be seen sporting a fake beard and sunglasses posted from an account bearing the name uh, nihil anand has gone viral now before i show you this clip so you can understand what the heck we're talking about let me just first say i went i watched his first clip and I, you know, cherry picked through some of his other uh, video posts on YouTube. And this um, philosophy that he uh, pro promotes and lives by is consistent with all of what he said on YouTube. So I'm not bringing you something that's purely sensationalist, although um, not being able to question the man's motives, I, I still wonder about this. And then as soon as I went to do a review, I discovered that there was music and they will hit me with a copyright strike uh, should or a copyright claim should I play a clip with music. So I can't do that. 
but I will leave you links in the show notes. Let's keep going. What he's saying basically is um, because children were brought into this world without their consent at the pleasure and discretion of their parents, children have no obligation whatsoever to do <clears throat> anything for their parents or to do what their parents um, request, require, that children are in fact, or that human beings are, are in fact um, free agents. Um, so now maybe you can understand a little bit um, with people who think this way and promote this kind of rhetoric to um, impressionable young human beings who don't have enough life experience to parse through what somebody like this is saying, uh, you can understand why your children uh, make the choices they make in the breaking away years from 15, 16 until 25-ish. That's also the time when they're um, executive functioning, which is the last thing to develop and solidify in the brain, that's also the time when that uh, decision-making process is uh, being solidified. So if you are 20 years old and you decide that it's a good idea to pierce your ears and put spreaders in them, as is common or was common in many African countries and now is becoming common among some circles, you will end up with uh, holes in your ears, you know, the size of whatever the plug or spreader is that you stick in that hole. Uh, and you can't really go back from that. It's, you would have to have it surgically sewn together and your ears would always be deformed. Just saying. Let's move on. Um, these ladies in white. I'm, this is a clip that I am not going to play. Stop it, Fox. Stop it. Uh, I'm not going to play it because I just want you to see this image. These ladies in white who were um, sitting uh, off to the president's um, right slightly uh, during the State of the Union address. I, this lady where my cursor is right here, this lady right here, I kept wondering why every time the camera was on them and they were actually standing, which wasn't very often, why she kept turning around and facing away from the president, why she kept turning her back on the president. And now I see why. She knew exactly where the camera was. And since this camera was closer to her proximity than the camera that was shooting from behind the president, she deliberately turned around and played to this camera. And, um, I, and so I want to lead into something about when this moment uh, this was the moment when the president was acknowledging, uh, you know, the number of women in Congress and their accomplishment and so forth, and they're all high-fiving and celebrating. But what were they doing when uh, the president said this under Title 17, Section 107? No greater contrast to the beautiful image of a mother holding her infant child than the chilling displays our nation saw in recent days. Lawmakers in New York cheered with delight upon the passage of legislation that would allow a baby to be ripped from the mother's womb moments from birth. These are living, feeling, beautiful babies who will never get the chance to share their love and their dreams with the world. And then we had the case of the governor of Virginia, where he stated he would execute a baby after birth. 
to defend the dignity of every person, I am asking Congress to pass legislation to prohibit the late-term abortion of children who can feel pain in the mother's womb. Not one of them moved. Not one of them moved. So I have a question for you. Uh, this was a history question for me, a refresher for me this morning. Who else in history wore all white to public events? Um, now you're going to say, oh, these ladies are wearing all white because they're honoring suffra the suffragettes, you know, the 100th anniversary and blah, blah, blah. That may be true. That's what they said publicly. But the suffragette movement had more to do with virtue and promoting virtue amongst society than what these ladies are representing. Why do I say that? Suffragettes um, advocated for prohibition. Now, we know that prohibition was a big flop because um, it just, you know, the sale of alcohol just went under, underground and uh, was bootlegged and so forth. And the government quickly realized that it would be better to repeal prohibition uh, and tax the goose poop out of alcohol than um, to continue with prohibition. Nevertheless, the suffragettes were advocating for prohibition as a measure against drunkenness. They saw too many women, especially low-income women, uh, being abandoned by men who were uh, alcoholics or being beaten or the children being abused um, and beaten. And so they stood against this. They also stood against um, unfair child labor practices where little children were put to work in various industrialized uh, companies, factories, and so forth uh, for 10, 12 hours a day. And um, the conditions were deplorable. These are virtuous causes. These women, as you just saw, will not now stand up. These honorers of the suffrage movement will not now stand up for the right of an unborn child to be born safely and unmolested. So again, I'm gonna ask you, who else in history wore all white to an event, to public events? Well, let's find out. This photo is from the Imperial War Music Museum of uh, Great Britain. And, it's, it, and the section is entitled Life in Nazi Germany. <clears throat> and what you see here is a childbearing age um, woman all dressed in white uh, a whole bunch of little girls there looks to be at least 40 little girls here all lined up in a row and most of them are in white and then a young uh, looks to be teenage girl late teenage maybe early 20s on the opposite end of this um, woman of childbearing age. They are all dressed in white and they are performing the Nazi salute. They are in fact at a Nazi rally. And so who are these women? Uh, and who are these children? The, the women are from the League of National Socialist Women. In other words, the, the League of Nazi Women. And it was their practice 
to wear all white to public events. And there was also a uh, chapter for young girls um, who also wore all white often. Uh, it was sort of like, you know, a Girl Scout for Nazi children, not female Nazi children kind of thing. Uh, it's not a good, accurate portrayal, but it gives you a picture of at least of what you're um, used to in this country. So what were um, what were these women actually representing? Were they representing suffragettes and virtue and personal growth over vice? Or were they representing socialism? Let's move on. Uh, one more, this is very cute. Uh, this little Samoyed uh, doesn't, some don't like it hot. Samoyed hides in fridge. Now, I've seen these clips. I've seen these of Huskies, Samoyeds, um, and so forth. These winter uh, cold hardy dogs, I've seen them climbing, clips of them climbing into the, the freezer or the refrigerator uh, to get relief from heat. And everybody thinks it's very cute and very funny. But what is being lost is that these dogs are built for the Siberian climate, uh, the Alaskan climate, the Northern Canadian climate, the Arctic Circle, basically, uh, climate. That genetically, these dogs were bred for that over a thousand years or so time. And so, let's see about this little puppy. The Samoyed is a large herding dog from the Spitz group with thick, white, double coated. A double layer coat taking its name from the Samoyedic peoples of Siberia. A Samoyed named Dante is a fluffy dog living in Bogota, Colombia and due to weather conditions often suffers from the blistering heat. This dog has apparently found the best way to solve the problem of overheating choosing to spend time in a refrigerator. Okay, um, and here we go. Right, you get the idea. You heard the owners there laughing and encouraging the dog to climb into the refrigerator. And this, this Arctic Circle dog is owned by someone in Bogota, Colombia, thousands of miles away from its, cli its um, native climate. Um, I think I'm going to leave it there. Let's go back to the desk. Poor little guy. That's all we have for you today. I'm sorry about the fading on the audio. Apparently we're having audio issues again, and I will see what I can do to fix that later on today. Until we see you again, have a great day.